whether with the master you call it the father within or whether with Paul you call it the indwelling Christ or whether you call it the presence of God in me or any other term makes no difference there is an actual experience that takes place within that testifies to the fact that we have become consciously one with the source that bears witness to the fact that I and my father are one and all that the father hath is mine repeating those words is a waste of time thinking such thoughts is a waste of time except as they may lead to the actual experience and you will discover that a great deal of the reason for lack of healing in the metaphysical world in any and all of its branches is due to this one fact that there is too much faith in the power of a treatment the power of a prayer the power of an arrangement of words whereas there must be no faith in these that would be as futile as a faith in the golden calf whether you externalize a golden calf or whether you have internally a golden calf in the form of statements or words or thoughts you are equally far afield thoughts are legitimate words are legitimate truth is legitimate the letter of truth is legitimate but only as stepping stones to the actual experience of this inner grace this inner presence when in your meditation you have opened the door of consciousness and you have felt the presence enter and don't look for it in form <coughs> because this would be just another form of the golden calf but expect it in the form of an awareness an assurance a peace and when that takes place you may be assured that God is on the field now here is the point we speak of believing in God and we even speak of having faith in God and yet there is no God peace peace where there is no peace believing in God is a pleasant waste of time faith in God is a pleasant waste of time emotionally pleasant very destructive to spiritual progress because believing in and having faith in amounts to nothing it is the experience of the presence itself that performs the work he performeth that which is appointed for me but there is a he not really it's not a he it's an it he too in these newer uh, translations we are interested to find that not only is evil impersonalized and God is impersonalized but this whole spirit itself is known as it by the master so that all we have done in the infinite way is reintroduce the master's revelation of course God is not he any more than God is she because God is not corporeal 
God has no physical structure. Therefore, in corporeal sense, no male nor female form. And certainly, God could not be so incomplete as to be in the nature of a male. What then becomes of the female? We are hardly prepared to call this illusion. No. God has neither the qualities of male nor of female, nor of both. God is incorporeal spirit. And the moment that you have any image and thought of God as male or female or both, you have a golden calf and you are worshipping a shadow. God is spirit, but the spirit of God is real, tangible. And while you cannot see, hear, taste, touch, or smell God or the Spirit of God, you can experience it by opening your consciousness, opening this inner door that is within you. This brings you back to the Master in the Gospel of John. And incidentally, it is also revealed that this Gospel of John was part of the Essenic scripture from which the master worked a scripture was which has not been included in the modern bible nor even in the apocrypha but which has now been discovered and which has been translated god is spirit and it is closer to you than breathing and nearer than hands and feet if so be You will open this inner door and let it escape to your conscious awareness. And this illumines for you the entire message of the Master as given in the Gospel of John. When you take the words, I and me and my, I stand at the door and knock. I am come that ye might have life and that ye might have life more abundant. The very I that is standing at the door of your consciousness and knocking is come for the purpose of giving you life and life more abundant. I am eternal life. This I that is knocking at the door of your consciousness. And in the 15th chapter of John, he says, abide in me. Let me abide in you. The same I, I and me, live in the consciousness of this I or me abiding in you. And then, my peace give I unto you. My peace. Not as the world giveth. My peace. The peace of I, me. There's no use looking outside in the world and wondering what form it will come in because it doesn't come in a worldly form. But strangely enough, when this inner peace comes, it does form and reform the effects in our outer life. It changes our relationships with other humans. It changes the nature and the amount of our supply. Because it, it is come that we be fed abundantly and with twelve baskets full left over. We are to take no thought for our life or 
wherewithal we shall be clothed or fed because it is its function to see that we are fed and clothed. It is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. All these things will be added unto you, but not by taking thought for the things. Relinquish thought of things and then turn within and admit me. Open this inner door of your consciousness that I may enter the temple of your being, for I am in reality the temple of your being. And I am the Lord of your being. I am the Lord of your being. Open this inner door and admit me, this I, and then let me abide in you. Relax in this assurance. Rest in this assurance. And be a beholder. As I go before you, the same I, I go before you to make the crooked places straight, to prepare mansions for you, to prepare a way for you. I, the Spirit of God in you, this is its function. This is the purpose that God planted the seed of himself within us, breathed his life into us, 